Have you ever wondered how to chase a metal back box into a wall ready for cabling? Well, don't go anywhere because I'm going to show you my method on how to do it. To do this job, we're going to need various different tools and accessories. Now, the one I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using both a one gang and a two gang box. The reason being that I'm putting a socket in the two gang and I'm extending my telephone cable into the one gang box. Now you can buy these ready-made in a dual box that looks something like that, but they're generally 35 millimeters deep and I don't really need to go that far. In fact, I don't want to go that far because the wall I'm chasing into is single skin. So one of the applications I will be doing with this is I'll show you in a second, but I've got a little attachment which fits between the boxes, which keeps them perfectly in line. Other things you're going to need, you're going to need a level, or a laser if you prefer, tape measure, pencil, and of course, you don't really need this, but it makes, makes life a lot easier, you've got your template. Now this one is really, really good, because it opens up to give me a dual one gang box, a two gang box, and a one gang box. And they've also separated the two and the one gang box perfectly to do the job that I'm going to be doing at hand. Leaving the perfect space between the two so that when they're fixed in position, when I put the accessories on, they don't overlap and they line up absolutely bang on. <laughs> Other things you're going to need, obviously you're gonna need your PPE, your dust mask, gear defenders, goggles, etc. Impact driver in my case, whether you're a screwdriver or a combi drill will do just as well. I'm going to be using my angle grinder with the appropriate blade to go with it. This is a, a diamond tip blade designed for concrete block. I'm also going to be using my attachment here, which fits onto my angle grinder. This will collect most of the dust, which is great. Um, and also it's spring loaded, which means I can plunge the blade into the wall, catching a lot of the debris. And I can actually see where I'm going with the screen. Also makes life that little bit easier when doing this type of job. I've also got oval trunking. Now this is to protect the cable. I've got the 20 mil trunking for the twin and earth cable I'm using for the power and I've got 16 millimeter trunking for the data cable coming in to do the phone line. On top of that I've also got a pair of snips or pliers uh, which are blunt nosed and they'll come into use very shortly as I demonstrate. I'm also going to be using a vacuum and as an optional extra which if you don't have to use if you don't have it but I'm also going to be using my cyclone to collect the rubbish, also helps keep the full pressure on the vacuum working at maximum for the whole time without clogging the filters up with the dust. Additionally, you're going to need an SDS drill with the correct type of chisels on it. I'll show you those shortly, along with maybe a combi drill um, with the correct drill for putting in your wall plugs. Or alternatively, you can just use your SDS again with the correct drill in the end of it. Well, the first thing you need to do is take your single back box and make a note of where the adjustment lug is so that what you want to do is then take your pliers and just bend in the opposite lugs because they just get in the way um, and they're not, not needed at all for this job. So now I've just done that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having it that way around so the socket's on this side and the data, the telephone is on this side. So using these little plastic clips here, they simply just clip together. You can see there's a couple of little pins on there and they literally just clip together. Why they don't come together um, in one normal, one single piece, I couldn't tell you to be honest, but that's not an issue. Uh, it does make it easier for storage with them being in halves like this. So just take those two, push them together like so, and now what I like to do is I like to make sure that the earth terminals on the bottom corner, it's not that matters for the, for the telephone one because uh, it doesn't have an earth. But now we just knock out the side holes. And these should just clip straight in. Just like that. A great little device, I'm not using them very often, 
but they do come in very, very handy. And I'll put a link in the description box below as to where you can get them yourself. So I'm taking out the holes from the other side, literally just force them together and they will eventually, with a little bit of help, a little bit of jigging and throwing, they are quite tough, but they will just clip in. But you do have to be careful with these because because there's not much metal across the top there, they are quite soft, they do tend to bend. So maybe it's worth putting those in first like that, then getting them in. Wow, it's not actually as easy as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. But there we go, top one's in, bottom one's in, nicely clipped together. And you can see that they're perfectly in line, nice and straight. Ready to mount it into the wall. So with the angle grinder, first of all you've got to dismantle all the bits off of it. Taking the handle off, obviously make sure there's no battery fixed in the end of it, or if you've got a mains one, make sure there's no mains attached. So just take it off. It's been a while since I've done this, I have to admit. Very useful guard, and that goes like that. Bits back against the angle grinder. Spin it all on. Finding the lock button on the back of the angle grinder. So Locks a blade, it doesn't spin, we can tighten it up. Close it up. So now you can see it's facing the wrong way, but that's not an issue because you can just spin it around. And with the Allen key that comes with it, you can see in there, there's a little Allen key there. You just tighten it up. Now the one thing you have got to make sure with these is that you don't take this edge too close so that when it springs open, just loosen that off, it can open all the way to the full depth. And there we have it. Ready to make a couple of big holes. Now, as you can see, I've already drawn out on the wall where my sockets are going to go. And as you'll see with this, perfectly matches up, which is exactly what I used to do the job. Now if I take the, the back boxes that I put together, you'll see that they are perfectly in line with the uh, template, which is brilliant that these things really do work. Now also what I've done here as well is that with the floor lifted up and I've already got the cabling already from a previous job that I did on the hall the other side I put the cabling ready knowing that this job was going to come up one day so what I've also done is I've taken I've drawn two lines straight down the wall to miss the joists that are below it so I know that my cables are going to have a, a good clear run I know which holes I need to knock out in my back boxes so if I just take those out quickly so that one and that one. So what I'm going to do now is just put the the rubber grommets in so that they're ready to go. And yes, before anybody says, this is a piece of bicycle inner tube that I'm using to attach my dust extractor to. But it works, so why not?
So I've got a very wide flat blade, which is the right width for the back boxes, and a smaller one, which will help me take out the channels. So now I'm going to need to go get the trunk in, make sure it fits in okay. And then I can uh, set the back box in place and then start the wiring. So there we have it. Back box is in, cabling's all in. It's all protected by the conduit. So now what I've got to do is mix some filler up, make it all good. And then once that's gone off, I can fix the accessories into place. So that's it. Um, how would you do it if you were to do it differently? I'd love to know. Please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give me a like and a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. To do this job, you're going to need various different tools. Now, for the drop I have in hand, I'm going to be using both a one gang and a two gang 25 millimeter boxes. The reason being that I don't need the depth of 35 millimeters. And I say that because they come, you can buy. To do this job, you're going to need various different tools and applications. What I'm doing in hand, I'm going to be using both a one gang and a two gang box because I'm going to be using you see, 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 see. Other tools you're obviously going to need will be a